Hey guys, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. Last episode, we started to work on our base design here, and I think it's coming along quite nicely. We've got a lot of building left to do. You may notice here that our shelter has been reduced in size a little, just to allow for some more expansion on this area. So yeah, we've got all of our machines moved over, including the steam machines. We got our boiler hooked up. The second one is still to be crafted. But I did remember about one slight issue with this setup on the coke ovens, and that is this should be a charcoal drawer. The wood belongs in this one here. Also, finally, pressure plates. <laughs> so to fix the issue with the drawers, we're going to make up a drawer key. We got the upgrade template from the assembling machine, and we combine that with some steel and gold. And this way we can lock the contents of both drawers, and we'll have to actually swap this around. There we go. Much better. So now you should be sending it to the compressor, right? Oh, there is wood blocking this pipe here. Aha, there we go. Machine noises is a good sign. So our goal for this episode is to finally be able to unlock our electric blast furnace. But the blast furnace is not a cheap multi-block to build. We're going to need a lot of materials. I have been doing some more mining between episodes and uh, we're currently processing things through the steam macerator. A few of you guys seem surprised that we're still only using the one macerator. So let's, let's give this thing a little upgrade, I think. And that is going to come in the form of this Greg Tech Multi-Block Steam Grinder, which apparently can macerate 8 ores at a time. For this though, we're going to need something called Tumbega, an alloy of copper dust and gold dust, which we then have to smelt into ingots, and make these into Tumbega gears. Four of those ingots need to be rods, which we send through Circuit Assembler 4 for the frame. The other parts we need for the grinder is a lot of these bronze plated bricks. This is just some bronze plates and some brick blocks which we looted from the village a couple of episodes ago. 10 seconds per recipe, not as bad as I first thought it would be. So while the bricks are cooking up we're going to need an input bus and an output bus. And I believe it's going to be a steam input bus. This may be the wrong item. <laughs> some way to input steam into this multi block for fuel. We'll start with the input and output buses first. We need two LV machine casings, and we craft these into two LV machine hulls. Oh, we only got 24 from this assembler recipe for these bricks. We are definitely going to need some bronze. Luckily, I did make up a batch somewhere. Yeah, and the alloy smell are nice. We're going to make a lot of this into plates. So our input bus is going to be on circuit one with refined glue. Very good, one input bus. And the output bus is going to be on circuit two. So we got the plated bricks, the Tumbega components, and we can craft our steam grinder. We still need the fluid input though. I'm not entirely sure which block it's supposed to be, let me figure that out. Alright, so I decided to put the molly block on the end of our LV machines. We can just tuck it into this little wall here. Although we have an incomplete structure. I took a gamble and went for the input hatch, but I have a feeling this is what's causing the incomplete structure. So I've done some searching in the quest book and it turns out we are completely wrong with this. We <laughs> there is a quest here for it and it turns out we need the input bus from Greg Tech Plus Plus and a very specific steam hatch. The problem is we first have to unlock this quest and to do that we have to cut down some clay to make a clay fluid pipe. Oh these machines are all so slow, look at them. <laughs> 15 seconds per recipe feels much slower than that. Oh it gives us 9 at a time, awesome. So yeah the clay plates we turn into clay fluid pipe. And we can use this clay fluid pipe to craft up ultra low voltage fluid tanks. I'm going to make up a few of these things. And we can combine this with some bronze to give us the steam hatch. And because these hatches have to be very specific, we have to make up some more Tumbega plates for this. And I guess we're left with these extra input and output buses. Huh, I guess we can use those for our boiler over there. These will definitely not go to waste, or even the blast furnace later on, yeah. That was totally planned. <laughs> so there's the input bus and the output bus. Take this whole multi-block apart for the quest. Alright, we got the multi-block rebuilt here. We got input bus on the left, output bus on the right. Steam has been inserted to the hatch on the back, which looks like it buffers 64. I'm, I was considering putting a little tank buffer in here. We'll see if that becomes necessary. Let's just try this thing out. So, uh, I guess we've got some redstone. We've got a lot of ores to process here. <laughs> uh, what else? Banded iron? Let's get rid of this thing. Malachite? Magnetite? Some pyrite ore? Sure. The question is, is this input boss going to automatically pull from the chest? Doesn't look like it does. Okay, we're going to need a cover for this, I think. Does it at least turn on? Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, it doesn't give us a progress. Oh, it does in the tooltip. 30 seconds per ore. Oh, but I guess it does do 8 at a time though, yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad actually, considering it only uses our steam. Yeah, we seem to be able to keep this thing fed. And we're getting our crushed dust. Yeah, awesome. Does this automatically output? No, okay. <laughs> That's unfortunate. You see that guy over there? Best friend. <laughs> He's got a buddy over there as well. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. Did he spot me? I don't think he spotted me. All right, so now it's EBF time. And yeah, look at that. The three hatches we crafted totally by mistake. <laughs> Alright, so obviously this is another multi-block we have to build. We need heatproof machine casings, the controller block which takes more heatproof machine casings, so let's start with these things I think. It's going to require some invar, which is an alloy of iron dust and nickel. There's another creeper over there. <laughs> so many mobs, I forgot to sleep the night I think. Oh, he spotted me. This guy is getting way too close for comfort here. Luckily though, we have a crossbow. Oh, that guy is tiny, look at him. <laughs> So between the episodes, I have anticipated the need for this Invar, and so we have a bunch of nickel that we mined from the Twilight Forest here. I think we actually will run this through the centrifuge. It's going to be like roughly 18 seconds, 20 seconds per recipe, but we have some other stuff to do, so let's throw this through here. The other parts we need, of course, for our blast furnace is the coil blocks. This we can either use mica, or we can use aluminosilicate, which is silicon dioxide and ruby. Oh, or we can use sapphire. And how do we get mica in this? Oh, we need asbestos. No, we should have a lot of asbestos. You know what? We're going to go this silicate wool route, which requires silicon dioxide. And it seems the easiest way to get silicon dioxide for us at the moment, I mean, there is a lot of recipes here, is either to use the centrifuge for glass dust or electrolyze some sand. And once again, it's going to take a long time, but let's get this sand electrolysis going. It's going to give us a 100% chance at silicon dioxide. And the other thing we have to worry about is ruby dust. So ruby is found along with redstone. And there should be some of it processed here. Yeah, nice. See, this is me thinking ahead. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, but we have some in pure ruby here. Not sure if this is going to be enough. We may have to mine some more. You know what? Let me count this out and gather the materials, and we'll be back, hopefully, to graft these coils up. And maybe the invar will be done by then as well. We'll see. Alright, well, it's been some time later, and we've been doing some processing, you may also notice a roof on this place. I was reading some of the comments on last episode, and you guys said even though there's blocks on top of this, the machines can still actually explode the way they were. So yeah, I began to construct the rest of our roof up there. I wanted to keep it quite high, I want this room feeling quite big. But yeah, we got a bunch of invar already made up, some of it is already in plate form, and the rest I put through the lathe for rods. It's really nice that we get the small piles back, which we can turn into regular dust, and we can smelt this back down to ingots to reuse. So the rods are going to go through assembler circuit 4, which should give us our frames. Meanwhile, this electrolyzer is finished with the sand and given us four, just over 4 stacks of silicon dioxide dust. We have to find the ruby that should be in the centrifuge output chest. And this is going to go through our alloy smelter. I think maybe I made up too much invar, but you can never have too much invar. We're going to have more blast furnaces later on anyway. The one thing I almost forgot about is actually the cooper nickel itself, which has to be also through this alloy smelter. In fact, is there a mixer recipe for this? There is a mixer recipe, it's so long as we use the dusts, 
So yeah, we have to convert the copper into dust. That's easy enough with our steam grinder here. Uh, oh yeah, I did also add some covers on here to automatically pull from the chests. So yeah, this will be thrown through our mixer on circuit one. That's gonna take some time. Oh, speaking of taking some time, this is 120 seconds per recipe for the silicate wool. Well, we have some other preparations to do in the meantime. So I did also go ahead and start crafting up the rest of these materials here. These ones on the left here, the pump and the low voltage coils is gonna be for the energy input hatches. However, to make the energy input hatches, we are missing two cells of lubricant. So to get lubricant, there's a few different methods we could use here. I was originally going to use the brewing machine and use uh, some soapstone and cruiser oil to give us 750 litres of lubricant. But the brewery takes a brewing stand and this is locked behind Thomcraft. Which is why I went for that roguelike dungeon over there. Apparently you can find them in there, but I didn't have any luck. And there was far too many mobs, so I didn't want to chance my luck there. Instead, what we're going to do is build the distillery. No quest for this. I guess not, but this distillery we're going to put right next to our electrolyzer here. And we are going to borrow some of this backlog of cruiser oil here. And we can distill this straight into lubricant. It's not as efficient as using the soapstone, but we have tons of lubricant to work with here. So I think we can just put this on the side here. We do have a spare pump that we'll reclaim later. But this we can set to import. And this recipe looks to be using circuit 24. Maybe? Why aren't you working? <laughs> Maybe it just needs an update. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're getting our lubricant, nice. And that is going to take quite a lot of cruiser oil, so I've started making up some of these tanks, which we also use in the input hatches. So these will be used later on. I'm going to fill the rest with cruiser oil and load that distillery up for later. So I think our frames have finished crafting. We may need to make up some more of these. In fact, yeah, let's get some more invar through the lathe for rods. But the frames we combine with some plates to give us the heatproof machine casings. Oh, we only need 11 for a blast furnace, that's right. Yeah, then this, this should be enough for us. So the other thing we need is a spare muffler hatch and maintenance hatch. And now that we've got the heat proofs, we can make our controller block for the blast furnace. Which just leaves the energy input hatches and the cupernickel coil blocks. We're going to be waiting a, a while on alumino silicate, I think. Yeah, cupernickel is almost done. We, we have almost four stacks of dust, which should be enough for us. We just have to run this through the wire mill. But yeah, this alloy smelter is going to be painfully slow here. <laughs> Maybe it's time for an upgrade, actually. Yeah, you know what? It's definitely time for an upgrade for this thing. We are going to upgrade the alloy smelter to the high pressure version, which uses a little bit more steam, but I think it's twice as fast. I don't know. Quest doesn't say. I guess we'll find out here. Oh, fancy UI. 60 seconds. So yeah, it is twice as fast. Nice. So I was running past this area. I noticed this new alloy smelter we just put down has run out of steam. And I think it's because we're converting here from regular potent pipe to small which is also being shared by this basic steam turbine input to power these LV machines on this side. So I think if we swap this out with regular potent pipe, we should be okay. We may have to swap this whole thing out here. One of the other things I was messing around with is our blast furnaces here to try to keep them running. I wanted to hook up some IO to these things, but apparently the pumps on or the conveyors on the side of these things don't work. So yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but yeah, I can't get this to work. Also, I've started using magnetite in this as well as tetrahedrite actually. We can use two magnetite to give us three iron, and similarly with tetrahedrite that will do two to three smelting. So it's quite efficient that way, it's just that we end up with a lot of tiny piles which blocks up the blast furnace. But yeah, I can't get any way to pull out from this thing, I'm not sure if there is a way to do that. But yeah, it's always nice to come back to the blast furnace, almost full here. <laughs> and now that we've switched to blocks of charcoal, this thing burns for a long, long time. But I also just realised that for our blast furnace, we're going to need a way to get steam over to that thing. So the plan is to have the blast furnace in here, in this room. But we will have to extend the steam pipe along, which means that we need more pawn. And to make any more pawn, we're going to need some more bronze, lead and tin. Three things were actually quite low on here, so I think I'm going to do a little bit of mining to gather that stuff up. Alright, almost one full Galena vein mined out here, the rest is just silver on the lower levels. Which I don't think we need for the time being. Time to get all this ore processed through our new grinder here. I'm so glad I built this thing. <laughs> oh, we might as well do the silver we picked up as well. And you know what, there's actually been a few quest rewards building up in our quest book. Let's go ahead and claim all of these things. You know what, the rewards were actually not that bad. We got some of these uh, fuel cells here which will come in handy later on and some, some more foods to boost the hearts. So this takes us up to a total of 7 LV loot bags. I think we're going to save 4 to trade for the MV when we open that tier. And we'll open 3 right now, hopefully we get something good. A spare tank, era wart seeds, and some circuit boards, yeah not bad. 
All right, so most of the ore has been processed. We've got, I don't know how many stacks this is. Oh, it's five pair. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a lot of potent dust. And the cooper nickel wires have also finished in the wire mill. These have to be the 2x wires. We need two stacks of these. I think we're still missing one stack of aluminosilicate wool to be processed by the alloy smelter. Oh, quest complete. Yeah, I was buying pistons from the quests. Some of the uh, the barrels over there for storage needed upgraded, so rather than crafting the pistons, I think it's better just to buy them with the technician coins. But yeah, the coil blocks have to be through our assembler with circuit 3, along with some molten tin. And we have to take out this glue here. Definitely don't want to waste this glue because we can still use it for sure. Alright, and we're off. We're making our coil blocks. Only 5 seconds per recipe. This is quite quick. Oh, but we don't have enough tin yet. I kind of anticipated that. I've got more here. We can throw this through our fluid extractor. That also reminds me, while I see this fluid solidifier, we are going to need some more rubber sheets. We're close to running out of circuits and conveyors, which we need the rubber sheets for. We've also distilled enough creosote oil to give us the lubricant we need for the energy input hatches, or just energy hatch as they're called here in GTNH. There's two of those things. And check this out, we got all 16 of our Cooper Nickel coil blocks. It's EVF time. The rest of the items should be in this chest. The controller, the heat proofs, all the input and outputs, maintenance hatch and muffler hatch. So I've got a space marked out on the floor here for us and I've also built this little service tunnel underneath. This is where we're going to run the steam from the tank. But let's see if I remember how to build one of these things. So controller goes up on the front, input bus on the left, output bus on the right. I think these hatches you can put anywhere but it makes sense to go left to right. So we'll put the input hatch also on the left hand side. The blast furnace may also give us fluid outputs. If we end up needing that we'll put the output hatch here. But for now that'll be a machine casing. Two of the LV energy input hatches on the back. And we'll also need the maintenance hatch on the back as well. Fill in the coils in the middle. Heat proofs on top. And the muffler hatch. Facing up. There we go. And we've got a blast furnace. Awesome. <laughs> but this is electric and we do have to power these input hatches. And there's a few different ways we can do so but we do need to provide this with MV power. So I think what we're going to do in this case is build four steam turbines for this thing, which will output four amps of LV, which should be enough to power this blast furnace. We have to actually craft four of these things though, which is going to take four circuits. How many are we down to actually? Five left, so <laughs> we're down to one left. Okay, we'll need some bronze fluid pipe, some machine hulls, I guess we'll use these ones, eight electric motors, which uh, oh we have here, nice, four tin cable and eight tin rotors. And I don't think we have any tin rotors, so I'm just going to batch craft a lot of them here. I think we'll need some more molten tin for this though. Actually, maybe we shouldn't go too crazy with these. We do unlock a cheaper recipe soon in the MV Extruder, which just takes 5 tin ingots. Or even the Fluid Solidifier. 4 LV steam turbines. So these will be distributed for each of the energy input hatches. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Alright, so now all we have to do is run the steam line over. Connect up all the turbines. What's the best way to run this? I think we will connect it up here in the middle, and then we'll go on this level. And since coming off the tank here, I mean we could technically add a second valve to this. But I think what we'll do, since I already have it crafted, <laughs> is use the huge potent pipe. Just for the increased throughput on this specific block space. And then we'll connect up our steam turbines from the bottom side here. Awesome, so that should be sending steam to these turbines. Yep, so long as we connect this pipe. So now we make sure we have 2x wire here, and we definitely don't want to connect them in the middle here. But now we just connect them all up to the turbines. I think this one is placed backwards though. Yeah, we want the dot on the wire. So now these should be receiving power. I think we'll have to do maintenance on this thing. I don't have all the tools with me though. <laughs> yep, we've still got screws loose and circuitry burned out. And you guys pointed out in the comments last episode that we can actually use fine solder and alloy wire with the solder and iron. That's really hard to say for me. <laughs> but yeah, we can use this instead of the full ingot. So that will save a, a lot on materials. I think we're also missing the screwdriver and the saw maybe. Oh, you know what it is? I think our sol solder and iron needs charged again. Oh, and I did also have to swap out this full pipe here with the larger potent pipe to supply enough steam to this high pressure alloy smeller. All right, that should be enough. That doesn't belong there. Did we have something out? Did I miss a block underneath? No. <laughs> ah, crowbar is the tool we're missing. Nice, we are ready to smelt. So long as we have enough steam. So while I was actually processing some of these materials, I noticed our steam tank had run dry a number of times actually. And I have disconnected this redstone. 
It was pointed out that this redstone here, the simplified version, isn't actually going to work. It turns out we do need the RS latch from last episode, since I didn't take into account the startup time for this bronze boiler. Basically, it takes some time for it to heat up and then therefore output steam. So if we have this constantly turning on and off and on and off, it's like, yeah, it's not going to work like that. So we do have to be careful with this though, as if we have stuff in the blast furnace and it turns off, or if it runs out of steam or power, then it will actually void the inputs. But we are going to need something to put through our blast furnace. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is aluminium. All of this raw aluminium we got from all of the aluminium gravel that we can find in the world. Run that through the smeltery, cast it out as ingots, and it gives us this raw aluminium, which we can put through the blast furnace along with oxygen gas. The oxygen gas cuts the processing time in half and also the EU cost. Oh, wait a second. This also changes the heat capacity as well. Oh no, we should be okay. Cupernickel coil is 1800 Kelvin, and this recipe calls for 1600 Kelvin. So yeah, the heat requirements on the recipe are dictated by the coil blocks that you have. Let's just do one to test this out. We need, also need circuit configuration one with this. Okay, hit it with the soft mallet and fingers crossed. Okay, it's running, it's running. <laughs> 80 seconds for aluminium. Let's check the steam burn rate on this thing. Yeah, that's, that's quite fast. I don't, <laughs> we definitely can't run this recipe very long. Although this is without our boilers on, so if we were to turn these on, as soon as this thing hits 100%, we, I mean, we get a lot of steam from this, and hopefully we're getting more than we consume. The steam tank is going up, yeah, so we definitely produce more steam than we need. We just have to actually control this thing with the redstone signal. And our creosote is now gone. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we also need to get this wood farm up and running. But now that we have access to aluminium, that is now a possibility. Oh! We got the achievement. I think that means we've got our first piece of aluminium in the output bus. Oh yeah, no quest though. I was expecting a quest here. <laughs> oh, this wants us to do it with cryolite for the quest. Yeah, that is the alternate route for aluminium. So there is also this recipe right here for aluminium, which uses cryolite. We can get this from the twilight forest and alumina. I'm not sure we, where we get alumina though. Ah, yeah, this is the recipe we're after here. So we can electrolyze clay dust for alumina. Although this is an MV recipe, so I think that's the one we'll be going with long term. But as the quest mentions here, we do have to find an alternate route until we can get enough for this quest. And what I think we're going to be doing is playing another numbers game with the chance outputs. Oh look at this, we still have a lot of aluminium gravel we can process. Yeah, all this has to go through our smeltery for the raw aluminium. But I think the way we're going to do it for the quest is to process the cryolite we've got from the Galena vein in the Twilight Forest. We can first of all throw this through our steam grinder. Which looks like it's full here. Yeah, I was processing a bunch of wood pulp, which I've been turning into planks one stack at a time. Yeah, these things are useful for chests and things. But yeah, the steam grinder is going to give us the crushed cryolite, send this through our forge hammer, and we get impure, which we then centrifuge. And this thing is actually full, yeah. I loaded this with a bunch of redstone. Yeah, we got some really good stuff in this, actually. But yeah, the centrifuge output will give us 11% chance at alumina. Yeah, it's two alumina dust and one cryolite for two aluminium ingots in the blast furnace, which is actually not such a bad recipe to use. Maybe we will do this over the clay route. I'm not sure, to be honest. From what I understand, that recipe is fairly new, though. I'm not really sure which one's better, to be honest. But yeah, as you can see here, we're out of steam again, and I just turned this thing back off. So yeah, I think before we go racing ahead into MV, the power requirements are only going to get larger. And we've invested so much already into steam, we may as well just finish the setup off. There is the other option of using diesel or oil, which we will eventually do, right? We do, of course, want oil for all of its byproducts and also for fuel. Wow, look at this. We just got a solar panel from an IC2 crop loot bag. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. And apparently it needs cleaned with right click manually. So I'm not sure how this thing works. Does it act like a cover? Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. And yeah, if we check the recipe for this thing, this takes three MV circuits, reinforced aluminium iron plates, two regular solar panels. I mean, look at all this. We don't have access to wafers yet. This is more LV circuits. Wow, that is, that's got to be one of the best rewards we've had so far. <laughs> And I guess we can use it to power the crop farm we're going to be building. I don't have a wrench to break this. But yeah, I've been doing a, a little bit of reading up on these IC2 crops. Looks like we got some weeds over overriding our field here. Which is part of the reason why I built it like this, spaced out. So yeah, I made up this weed troll. I also made the plant lens, which gives us more information about different crops. And I also made up this little filing cabinet here, as the quest recommends for all of our seed bags. 
But yeah, not sure how far exactly we're going to go with this today. I really just want to get the quest unlocked for this crop harvester. As uh, to even craft this thing, we're going to need a lot of materials we still don't I mean, yeah, this is going to take a while to, to actually craft this thing. I want to unlock the quest for it though. So it looks like we're missing scanning bees, crops, and more. I don't know where that quest is though. Uh, maybe it's not even in this quest chapter. Oh, it's in the LV tab down here. Yeah. This thing, the basic scanner. Oh, this is expensive. Four MV circuits. Maybe we just skip the quest. Yeah, I mean, these are retrieval tasks, not crafting tasks. So we can go and just pick it up later once we have it crafted. All right, I think that sounds like a plan. But um, <laughs> at least we have these crops up and running now. And uh, I think I'll make it a little project between episodes to... Oh, look at this. One of these things uh, crossbred. And we got brown mushrooms here. I think all of these are just weeds. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the possibilities are in terms of what you can get out of the crossbreeds. All I know is that you guys pointed out we can crossbreed sugarcane for stick reed, which is what we can get resin for, and that means we we can stop farming all these rubber trees. But yeah, to crossbreed, you just have to have two fully grown crops and then the double crops in the middle, and then it has a chance to breed into something else on the middle slot. Hold on, can I take this solar panel off? I can't, okay. <laughs> I was afraid it was stuck on this... Uh, one amp battery right here. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to save this for later on. We achieved our goal for today and got the blast furnace up and running. Actually, now that our steam tank is filled up again, yeah, it's like three quarters full. Let's smell up some more aluminium. We do have the monitor this though. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on that. But anyways, I think we're going to wrap things up here. I'm going to do some more crop breeding between episodes. Maybe see if we can get stick read. And I guess I'll also make a start on the sensors, the robot arms, and the pistons. I think we'll also have to make up some more MV circuits though. And if we're going to craft one, we might as well craft a few. <laughs> as we are approaching the MV tier. But, you know, I'm, I don't really want to rush into MV. I don't think there's much of a reason for us to rush. I think we're going to play things quite slow and uh, try to build up our infrastructure enough so that we don't run into any problems down the line where we have nothing ready for us for the next tier. So we could technically stretch for MV, but I... Yeah, it would be just that. It would just be a stretch. Yeah, we're going to start out the steam power first of all. But that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.